I'm Rich Walker. I'm one of the directors of the Shadow Robot Company. And we're here at ICRA in Yokohama to show the old Shadow Hand, the Shadow Hand Classic, and the new Shadow Hand. So at Shadow, we've been building hands for robots since the 1990s. We started out doing that, we actually carved a hand in wood out of maple. 16 degrees of freedom, actuated by pneumatic muscles. And we were able to make that look really, really like a human hand. It didn't have sensing, but it was able to do grasping. After that, we built a couple more versions where we kept iterating on that idea of making something that was as human-shaped as possible. And that is a design challenge with a whole set of design compromises. So it has tendon drive from motors on the forearm. This actually makes it quite long and bulky. And also it makes it quite complex mechanically because we have to try and route these tendons through the centers of all the joints to minimize coupling across them. And that's actually surprisingly hard to do. When the wrist moves, that produces quite a lot of slop on the tendons. So we have to have tensioning elements in here to pick that up and compensate for that. And finally, inside here, these are really, really packed regions, which mean that any kind of wear, any kind of chafing is aggravated. And if something does break, it's interesting, shall we say, to repair it. So Google DeepMind came to us and said, look, we want to do principled reinforcement learning with robots in the real world. And to do that, we need reliable, rugged hardware that's capable of high-end manipulation skills and has lots of sensors. And this is the result. So this is a new shadow hand. It's not at all anthropomorphic. It's got four degrees of freedom in each finger, three fingers. They're mounted in a kind of triangular format, so they come together in a pose. We focused really, really hard on reliable and robust. It's bigger than my hand by quite a large margin. It's got this very chunky base, and it's got a very, very wide range of movement. No matter how robust you make something, somebody will always manage to break it. So we have to accept that. So we try and extend the mean time between failures, but then we try and reduce the mean time to repair as much as possible. So the fingers are modular. The tendons are easily replaceable. It took an hour to change a tendon on the other hand. You can change all 15 in under an hour on this hand. The touch sensor's replaceable. Everything that's wearable can be changed and replaced. So very much designed to get you back up and running as quickly as possible if and when you do manage to make something go wrong. We have two types of touch sensing on this hand. There are magnetic tactiles on the proximal and middle phalanges, 14 and 22 there. This is a, a fairly classic design with a three axis Hall effect sensor and a magnet above it. But then on the fingertips, we have these really, really powerful new optical sensors. So what we've done is we've turned the dial a little bit. We have a stereo camera pair looking at an array of dots printed on the inside of the skin. You can see there the screen view. These are the dots on the left and right. We're tracking one of the particles, just to show you the, the centroid of it as I move there. And you can see a huge amount of response to what's a very, very light touch. So each finger has four movements up here and five motors in the base. Now, a typical robot, you'll have one motor driving one joint. Nice, simple, obvious. When that motor changes direction, you get a little bit while it engages going the other way. It's called backlash. And if you take a mechanism, you can often find you can wiggle the output and see the input doesn't move. We don't want that here. So we actually use five motors connected through to all the finger joints in a slightly complex way. But that means we can always have all the tendons being pulled, which means there's never a point where we change direction and get a little pause in the movement. Because we wanted to use very well understood, reliable and robust motors, we knew that they and their gearboxes would have to be down here, and then we would drive tendons up through into the fingers. So one interesting observation about this hand is that we have four degrees of freedom. On the human finger, you have four movements, but it's very hard to drive these two movements separately. On here, we have four and they're very flexible. So actually it behaves a lot more like a system made up of three thumbs rather than three fingers. The nice thing about this is that this is now in production by Shadow. People ask how much it costs, and it's actually cheaper than our standard hand. We can make it available to people in the RMD community and, and elsewhere. Um, we're very pleased to be able to do that. It's been really, really exciting making these things, and we're really excited to see what people do. 